Hey YouTube, it's Craig here and I'm back with a new video. In this one, we're gonna be restoring a Waterman 52 store demo or employee model. So let's get right into it. So this pen was on eBay and the original listing said it was a 1952 Waterman's 52 and a half V. And out of haste, I went and bought a 52 and a half V as a parts pen to be able to fix this one up only to realize it is in fact just a regular 52, except I did see this, the property of the LE Waterman Co. not to be sold, extra fine account nib, and the imprints are pretty much perfect. The clip is a little loose on it, but it's there, it's intact, it's, it does the job. Might be a little crack under there. The problem was mostly the nib, which I've removed it. I'm gonna remove this awful sack and I have a uh, better lever from another pen. Um, and we will kind of go through replacing the lever and the uh, section looks really good. The nib is kind of junky, but I have a good replacement account nib for it. So the feed snapped in half, basically. And the lever on the 52 and a half feet isn't quite long enough, so I mean, it's, it's long enough, it's the same size as this. This one's just all wonky and messed up. When you pull up the lever, the little bar comes down and pushes down on the ink sack. That isn't quite big enough for this size pen, but it'll work. It just won't be able to hold as much ink. So we're gonna start by cleaning out some of this gunk. I have the section that I'm gonna scrape off. This nastiness, I'll put the trash feed and the nib that needs, it just needs to be reworked. I'll send that off to Greg Manuskin in the future. This had to soak for a little bit, so I actually had this soaking in a little cup of water, and then I was able to remove the feed. I was afraid I was gonna have to hammer out the feed, but luckily, didn't need to do that work. It's just a dental tool off of eBay, just to kind of get in and remove as much of this old sack as possible. I am no expert by any means. I am not a restorer. I can replace a sack and I've watched enough YouTube videos and I, I know how to replace a lever. I broke one lever once trying to do it myself. Make sure you practice on something. Don't don't go into like a, a, a really nice pen and try and do it yourself for the first time. Let's try to get all this gunk off here. Let's use my nail over that. Of course, I'm gonna fast forward this video a little bit. You don't need to see all of me trying to get all this stuff off. I'll, I'll get it all off eventually. But we'll just kind of put that off the side. I'll get that done later. And as for this, let's try and remove this sack out of here. Usually just kind of break it up into pieces and then pour it out into the trash. These are just so old and junky. Just pretty much, there's no wrong way of really doing this whatever gets it out. Again, these tools were like really cheap off of eBay. I'm sure you can buy them off Amazon too. Just sort of dentist tools. I pull up on this, it'll break the lever because it's pushing down against a really hard rubber sack. Wow. So there you go. There's the old hard rubber sack. Giant chunk of it. Holy cow. That's like the most intact I've had one be. So now I can pull up on the lever. You can see the little pressure bar kind of coming down and moving freely now, but I'm gonna remove this to replace it with one that is less damaged. What you gotta do is there's a little tab on the underside of this part of the lever box. So I'm gonna get, you can see the little screwdriver going through there. I'm gonna hook that on there and try and push that tab open. Again, I am not a pro, so please, don't attempt this uh, or have a professional do it. Uh, don't, or don't ask me to do it at least. 
I'm just doing this for educational purposes. Okay, see it? There's the screwdriver. I'm gonna bring it up, pop it right underneath there, and apply pressure and see if that works. Okay. Tab has been pushed back just like that. This can pop out now. Push the little tab. You can see the tab on there is a little pushed back a little too far, but that's okay. Now I can just use the forceps. Push that down, then slide that out. <sighs> is this so hard to do? There we go, got it. All right, so there is the pressure bar. And here it is compared to the other one, 52 versus a 52 and a half V. But now this can just pop right out, so. There we go, got it out of there. So now we have this barrel, all good to go. It's not a bad lever by any means. It's just the wear on the actual lever this isn't to my liking. We have the barrel. We have the replacement lever, which is coming off of a 52 and a half V. And the lever is just ever so slightly shorter than the 52. So it's not gonna fill up the ink quite as well, but you can see that little tab I pushed down. That's how I removed the other one. So it's ready to go in place and for me to reattach it. But I think I'm still going to use the larger 52 pressure bar, even though the 52 and a half V section is smaller, it has the same diameter on the inside. So the feed from a 52 and a half V is going to work. Just using a little screwdriver just to get the gunk off this section. Okay, so I went and I found a sack that will work. Line it up just to make sure. Yeah, okay, cool, it's good length. I haven't shellacked this yet, but I do have shellac from Pendemonium that I'm gonna use for this pen. I also have a nice replacement nib. So I have this hand engraved vine that I got at the San Francisco show and I replaced it with the nib off of this donor pen. So this is now not an accountant nib, which is great because I'll actually use this one a little bit more. The accountant nibs are, they're great. They're fine, stiff nibs. So if you want a fine, stiff writing experience, this is the, the right nib for the job, but I don't really use them all that much. Although with this pen, with it being a extra fine accountant, employee pen, uh, you want the right nib. So I have this nib, which is better than the one that came with this pen. They're literally the exact same thing. They're from the same era. Just this one, this one isn't jacked up and messed up. For the time being, I'm just gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna use a probably a blow dryer to warm it up and then do that all, because I don't wanna crack anything. Let's put that off the side and now let's reassemble. So that's where these dental tools come in handy because it has this hook in order to bend that tab down. Once it's in the pen, you can just kind of bring this dental tool through and then pull it and it'll bend the little tabs back into place. I've only done this once before, so this is gonna be a little bit of a struggle. Through here and then over that little tab that'll lock it in place. So that's the plan. Did I do it? Is it attached? Let's see. Did I get it? I think I got it. I sure did. I got it. Wow, all right. 
Okay, that was weird and frustrating, but for whatever reason, the lever wouldn't snap down and, and stay in place. So, but I think it had something to do with the, oh no, shoot. Well, the bar came out and I already took my little dental tool and sort of locked this down in place. So that is not going anywhere. That is locked and where it needs to be. But now this does snap down and stay down. But now I got to reattach the bar. But this actually might be a little easier now that it's in place. So let's, let's do that. I don't think it's attached. Is it attached? I don't. Oh, it might be. Yeah, no, it's attached. Let's see with the sack in there how that behaves. Yeah. It's doing its job. It's in place. We did it. We replaced the sack. We replaced the lever with a better looking lever. We got a nib on there. This pen is, I mean, other than the fact that the clip is loose, we got a pen that is pretty much put together. So let's just for funsies, put that down. Um, I need to warm this up and uh, set this in place and align it in such a way that it looks good. I wanna have the, uh, the ripple line up real well. And I don't usually put the China marker on here, but I think it'll look really good. So we're almost there. I'm gonna set this nib in place. Yeah, we'll get this going. Okay, so here we are. I soaked the section in water for a little bit, and then I used a blow dryer, because that's all I have. I don't have a heat gun or anything like that. I'm not a restorer, but this was a, a nice try at it. And I was able to, um, after a little bit of time with the blow dryer, it warmed it up enough that I was able to shove the nib and the feed into the section to where I'm comfortable with it and happy with it. It caps nicely. Again, this is loose, but that's okay. It's still gonna be a nice pen in the collection. The section, I cleaned this off as well as I possibly can. And now I'm gonna use the shellac. So I have shellac from Pendemonium. And I'm going to put the shellac on here. And this pen, this pen will be pretty much done. Get this on there. What I usually do is I get it just, just on there enough. So, and then slide it over. All the way on there. Put that off to the side. Slide this into the pen. There might be a little bit of shellac that gets onto the section, which is okay if that spreads on there, because then it'll stay on there. Line it up the nib with the lever. The ripple looks pretty good on there. I am gonna apply China marker just to where it says, just to the lines and where it says uh, property of the LE Waterman Co. I'm not gonna do it to the entire imprint, although you can see how nice this imprint is as well down here. Uh, I'll probably do it to the 52 on the bottom as well. Not to be sold. Well, someone sold it to me. Yeah, like I said, I usually don't do this. I won't put it in the Waterman's logo, but I want it to be visible. So we got that on there, and then we will do these lines too. Doesn't really do any harm to it. It's just putting this sort of like wax crayon into those grooves. It's not gonna scratch it up or anything like that. I have another employee pen that is uh, 
It has red in it, but it's an earlier one. It's kind of filling up all those little grooves. You can buy these China markers at like uh, hardware stores and stuff like that. They're like less than a dollar each. And that should do it. And it's done. Let's just leave it like that, right? No, I'm just joking. We're not going to leave it like that. Next, you just kind of using this paper towel, I'm just going to brush over with the paper towel and it'll remove the excess. So you get an idea how it's gonna look. And zoom out a little bit, <laughs> there we go. And over time, the China marker will kind of fall out a little bit, especially with use. It does make a little extra waxy feeling, but my buddy Gabe would kill me right now for restoring this thing. He'd be like, I would've left it the way it was. Yeah, well, sometimes it's better. He's like, you could've had two pens. And now you only have one. Yeah, pretty much, and just a bunch of parts. I think this looks awesome. That way you knew it was a pen that was not for sale. Again, no water or anything like that, just you're literally just using a paper towel to rub off the excess. Same paper towel I've been using this entire video. Did not realize this video was gonna take this long, but I really am digging the results of this. There you go, guys. Property of the Ellie Waterman Company, not to be sold. Extra fine accountant. It goes right along. Granted, this one says employee on it. It goes right along with this one, medium. Pretty cool. There you go. $140 gem of A52. And that's the video. Thanks so much for checking out, you guys. If you have any questions about anything that you saw in this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this. Check out my Instagram, at Craig Rocanova, and check out my website, 173 Broadway, for more Waterman's Ideal Antique Fountain Pen goodness. We'll see you all in the next video. All right, peace.